the thing is uh, that there can be uh, such a power of attraction in, in these thoughts. Like um, uh, when I get distracted, it's not because I hardly uh, think about the past anymore. I don't project in the future, but I would have all these kind of uh, uh, very pleasant states building. And then I can see my mind being uh, busy with this, with creating images and, and feeling and sensations around it. And it's, it's more uh, enjoyable than Good. being trapped in the past. Or, 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 but it's still, I can see there is a kind of you know, dreaming state that yes, I would yes. create. And it's so seductive. It's so pleasant to be in it. That, uh, right. It's so powerful. The mind seems to be so powerful because we are so interested in it. That's it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Also, as long as it's un unpleasant, ugly stuff from the childhood, and it, we are not quite aware, but somehow we are so interested in it. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> why it stays alive, even if you are not aware that we are so interested in it. And then, uh, if you slowly get rid of that, then other other tendencies of the thoughts are there that you start to get interested in creating all kinds of beautiful castle, and it still seems to be so interesting. Most of the time, all those thoughts are sheer nonsense. <laughs> mm. But sometimes it, it's difficult to differentiate between a, a, a real state of bliss, which unfolds into uh, whatever, vision of uh, investigation, and, and, and things which would be uh, uh, created by man, by the small thing. Mm. You see what I mean? Yes. I mean? Yeah. yes. <clears throat> As your perception is getting subtler, your alertness also has to get subtler. <laughs> <clears throat> and we are, of course, it always will sneak in the old habit, the old me, 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 me. You start out spiritual practices and then uh, invariably there comes that pride. Now I'm spiritual and I'm just looking at all these people who are worldly people. <laughs> <laughs> but if that sincerity is there, that you really want peace of that silly mind, then sooner or later, hopefully sooner, <laughs> You become aware, oh, oh, I'm still doing the same thing. I just gave it the new coloring, spiritual coloring. <laughs> but it's still the me, 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 <laughs> me, me. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, when you become aware, you work on it to not get involved with it, to detach from it, and slowly you detach from it, invariab invariably it will sneak in again subtler. <laughs> Very subtle. Very subtle. And, from, and more subtle. Yeah. <laughs> you can't avoid it. That's how it goes. But if you are sincere, then you always become aware again. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm doing it again. <laughs> it's again actually the same mechanism like before. It's just looking much more spiritual. <laughs> and then when you say that, then you just... Relax. Don't, don't stand in judgment. This is right and this is wrong. This is spiritual. This is not spiritual. Just keep quiet. As good as you can. Be consciously conscious. Here, now. Quiet. And then, from that perspective, it's much more easier to see how the mind is again creating. Even if it's on a more elevated state than before, <laughs> still the same mechanism. Hmm. After all, we're always talking about the mind as if there was a mind. <laughs> as if there was something like a mind. There's not really such a thing. We just have the capacity to form consciousness into reasonable thoughts. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. It's creative. It's the self that wants it to express itself in a beautiful, creative way. But it's a tool that should be used where it's appropriate 
and then put aside. And somehow we have something has mal malfunctioned growing up in this world and instead of learning to use that tool creatively, beautifully, it has become like the the boss on top and we have to we have learned to compulsively think and think and think and think all the time. And with that compulsively thinking actually we are keeping our reality together. But if we stop doing that, then there is no mind. There is just the potential to think. <laughs> so it's not that you have to have make your mind subtler. In a way you can say it's getting subtler and subtler. The mind is getting subtler because somehow we have to use words and talk about it. But it's more that you become more and more quiet. And the more and more you are quiet, when you think the things are, uh, the thoughts are clear. Clear thinking doesn't, people often think that they should clear, clearly think, they should think clearly. <laughs> And think, thinking clearly means to think a lot about the subject. Mm. <laughs> but it's the opposite. If you think little, then you start to think clearly. <laughs> and the less you think, the clearer your thoughts. Somehow we have to get rid of that compulsion to simply have to think all the time. <laughs> And it's not by way of forcibly controlling the thoughts, but by way of not more being interested in all that crap that goes through our heads all the time. <laughs> do you do some form of uh, movement or yoga practice? Or? Like exercises? Exercise, physical exercise or breathing exercise. Or... You mean whether this is advisable or you're asking whether this fellow is doing that? <laughs> well, yeah. Kind of both, but actually, I don't know, I would be more interested to know what, what you're doing. <laughs> My story. <laughs> I, I did a lot of exercises, I'm not doing much now. <laughs> Actually, now I'm not doing regularly. I did until there was for one set of exercises I did for 25 years until about one and a half years ago, nearly every day. Uh, it's, they are quite known. They have become known in the West as the five Tibetans. I think most of the people know them. So I did them a long time. And it helped me to keep the body reasonably healthy. <laughs> Even when I was not moving much, <laughs> but then somehow uh, I stopped doing them <laughs> one and a half year ago. Sometimes spontaneously I'm doing a few exercises when I feel like, but it has more shifted of stopping doing much physical exercise. I'm going to walk with the dogs in the morning. <laughs> 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 but uh, it has more shifted in simply being aware of the breath, no matter what. Whether I'm walking with the dogs, or whether I'm sitting quietly, or whether I'm sweeping the floor, or whether I'm watering the garden. Without uh, controlling it, just observing it. Uh, I don't want to go into too much details because I don't want you to try to imitate what I'm doing. <laughs> I would recommend just observe your breath. Because you don't have to control it. Most of the time people are hardly breathing, they are just gasping for air. <laughs> <laughs> and if you learn to be aware of your breath, automatically you will start to breathe deeper and gentler and slower without having to force yourself to do so. You may have times when you are not doing something else and where you're breathing controlled. If you do that kind of exercise, you can, but you don't have to. But just already consciously breathing is doing totally the job.
What I like to do, uh, in brief, I, I say je, and brief, brief out, uh, suis, I am. Yeah. I like to, to so think. <laughs> No, 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 I am uh, English, but uh, in right, French... Right, but uh, it's text. Je <laughs> suis. suis. <laughs> but I follow, see, maybe, maybe means that. <laughs> I like it. Yes, by all means. Then go on like this. <laughs> but sometimes also no no words. No words. Expire <clears throat> and speak. Yeah. Both is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I can't, oh. sorry, but you say okay. also, uh, have a point in the, the body. So I, I connect it with uh, the art of, at the right side, uh, where I have a, a sensation of um, pressure, often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. It comes at one moment, uh, I prefer to breathe uh, in. Breathe in, breathe out. And relax. And yes, also, <laughs> yes. Uh, at least. Relax, 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 relax. <laughs> relax, yes, yes. Actually, we have been talking about detachment. Detachment is nothing else but learn to relax. Yes, yes. We are holding on to things and somehow on one level or other it's all stiff and <sighs> yes, yes, yes. We have to relax and it goes. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Um, in the last two years, I've been going through a process of um, surrender, without knowing that I was going through it until. That's the best surrender. <laughs> <laughs> very recently, yeah. <clears throat> um, and that process involved letting go of forms of my practice. Yeah. I had become attached to certain forms. I was doing, I had been doing yoga for some years and then I took a teacher training course and I was attached to the form. Yeah. I, I hadn't realized in the moment, but then later it came clearer because mm -hmm. I was feeling so bad my body couldn't move. So I, I tried to, to do the spiritual practice through reading. Uh, what had been pranayamas and asanas before, mostly, and some uh, readings became mostly readings and praying mm -hmm. and, and japa. Mm -hmm. So I had to change forms so yep. I could keep in the path. Um, but at, at a certain point, when uh, coming to India was uh, just manifested there, and it was clear I was coming, I was going to book the place and um, instead of going to the website where I always went and read about the Guru's teachings, I went to the second, God knows why, and there was a disclaimer of the board of directors of the international ashrams stating a possible case of sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very uh, moving because mm. I was, um, I realized some days later that I had been attached, I had idealized the whole Vedanta. Mm -hmm. So um, I had had this hardly, I don't know if it's uh, correct to call them visions, but I had seen not Virginia, but me mm. in surrounded by people in the ashram, in an ashram, in, a, it, in, right. in the wild, in the ashram, and, and I felt that it was me. Right. And suddenly I, I, I was going to book and I mm. click a different link and I see this, and even though it's not exactly the same organization, it is linked. Yeah. So I felt unsafe. Yeah. And withdrew. Mm. And well, a friend told me about Aruna Chala, and I said, okay, I'll ask for guidance, and I'm here. Yes. But the whole thing is, I'm, I'm naked. Because 
That's a good state to be. <laughs> right. now you, it's not a question, and, it's just now sharing. You, and now you came in January to Tiruannamalai and it's like a spiritual supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not a question, it's just sharing yeah, yeah. and just... Fine. Thanks for your sharing. Your final guru is your own self. Connect with that guru as good as you can. Don't go running around and think I have to get something here, I have to get something there. Connect with that. And then if it's right in your way that you connect somewhere, then you feel a resonance. And the external teacher's job is not to play teacher, and you will the little disciple, <laughs> but the external teacher job is somehow to grab your attention and make you clear, look, it's already there, in yourself. That's the teaching. <laughs> That's the teaching process. Somehow or other, with all that crazy, with all that crazy games they are playing, somehow grab the attention and bring it back to yourself and to tell you, look, it's already there. It's not that I'm having something you are not having. <clears throat> but connect with that ultimate guru and that will guide you. And then sometimes you may connect for some time with a teacher and you will get at that time what you need from there and then you may go ahead. And if they have their own issues and their own thing to work out, then never mind. You you can be grateful for what you got and you proceed. So don't worry now about having wasted time when you have been somewhere because you become aware maybe it's not all as pure as you thought. So what? You got what you needed at that time. And you, you proceed and you connect with the final, final guru, your own self, here now, as good as you can, and it will guide you. And if the necessity is that in your story you have a close relationship with a guru who takes you by the hand and leads you all the way until you don't need a teacher anymore, then it simply will happen by itself. You can't produce it 